G'day watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. And today I want to do a bit of a group comparison of budget Rolex Submariner Hulk homages. Now the green seems to be a little bit in fashion in the last year or two in uh, you know the watch industry, uh, particularly uh, I guess in a lot of uh, models that have color variation. The green seems to be uh, the popular model these days, and perhaps none other is more famous than this watch, the Rolex. Hulk. But of course not everybody can get their hands on one, not just because of pricing but be but also because of Rolex's uh, you know, game of uh, limiting supply and availability. Uh, so you know what I have here today is a number of different uh, budget homages, you know, keeping the price at 200 or below all the way down to you know, very uh, cheap model to start with. Uh, I've got four different watches and uh, somewhat surprisingly there are actually four different movements I'm going to talk about uh, in these models. So guys without further ado let's flip it around and take a look at the comparison. All right guys so here we have the watches on the classic wood table. Um, now what uh, are the similarities uh, to start up? Uh, so you know, first up, I'll just show it on, on the Phoebus. So they all have Submariner style indices, of course. So by that, I mean, there's the rectangles at 369, the triangle at 12, and then circles in all other positions. They all have the Mercedes handset uh, with, you know, the lollipop uh, for the seconds. Uh, they all have the Cyclops magnifier. So the, you know, I, I guess the rest of them have the Cyclops magnifier. The Phoebus uh, does come uh, usually with a Cyclops magnifier on the date models. This one is actually a no date model, of course. And they all have unidirectional coin edge uh, bezels, right? Uh, dive style bezels, unidirectional turning. Uh, they all have oyster style bracelets, uh, different types of clasps, and we'll go into that. Uh, but, you know, all have the oyster look. Uh, the uh, bracelets on uh, all these watches, none of them have a, an actual dive extension. Some of them have a comfort extension. Uh, none of them have an actual dive wetsuit extension. The finishing, I have to say, on all of these are, uh, are subpar. They, they all have flaws if you look closely, right? None of them are, are very, very excellent, I would say. You know, you can see waviness in the brushing. Uh, and I think with the, the one on the left, they didn't even bother brushing because they can't it would be too obvious, so they've gone for all polished chrome finishing on that alloy there. Uh, all, all of these uh, three have screw down backs, okay? So you know, just for example, I'll pick up this one. You can see there's actually a screw down uh, case back. In this one, it's a display, but the, the t vise uh, on the left actually has a friction, right? So it's in most of these, all these others have screw down. Uh, with the exception of the one on the uh, left and they all have also put a uh, screw down crowns again with the exception of this t vice which is actually a push crown all right so brand wise t vice liege or liege pagani design and then phoebus on the very left uh, so just going to go through them and talk through them uh, in, in terms of the ins and outs and the details of each model uh, so you know i'm going to put a wrist shot uh, of each one uh, first up, so here uh, we have the T vise or the Te Weise in, in Chinese, Te Weise T801, a men's mechanical watch. So at least they don't go out and say that this is a dive watch uh, because it isn't by any means, it is a men's mechanical watch. Uh, the uh, pricing, so MSRP. I guess who really cares, right? What's the actual MSRP? Sometimes it's listed at around 39 USD. A realistic acquisition price is around 25 USD. Sometimes a bit higher, sometimes a bit less, but that's about the going rate on places like AliExpress. Of course, this is completely Chinese made. It's not even a Japanese movement in here. Uh, in terms of sizing, 42 millimeter diameter, it is the thickest of the bunch here at 14.8 millimeters to the top of the glass. Uh, and overall weight is also um, the flimsiest, I guess, if you will, or the lightest. Uh, it's actually 124 grams. Uh, it is rated only at 30 meters, so not actually for swimming. Movement in here, so movement-wise, uh, I'm going to just put details on the left of screen here. I'm not going to read it out because uh, I've covered this uh, before in other reviews. Uh, so the movement in here is the Tungji movement, uh, otherwise known as the China 
Unified Movement, uh, often affectionately abbreviated as CUM. Uh, so, you know, in terms of dual count, uh, if it's correct, right, the information I got, this would be the least dual count of the lot here at around 17. That tends to be what they go for. Uh, loom wise, okay, the loom in here is very, very poor. They don't tell us what it is. It doesn't last through the night. It hardly lasts a couple of hours, actually, I gotta say. Very, very bad. Uh, glass is mineral glass. Uh, bezel clicks is 60, and there's very, very loose back play here. Clicks. All right, that's how it sounds. All right, so 60 click unidirectional turning bezel with heaps and heaps of back play here. Uh, the uh, bezel material is some sort of metal. I assume it's aluminium, but they don't, again, they don't really say. It looks like an aluminium bezel. Uh, bracelet ends are hollow, right? And the bracelet, of course, is going to be push pin, right? You're not going to expect anything else for $25. Uh, and the clasp is very much a pressed metal, very, very loose uh, push button. Sometimes this, this push button in some models have come loose without pressing the button. So it's, it's certainly poor, but what do you expect for this? Right, so you know, feature-wise, right, the, the poorest bezel, lots of back play, it doesn't hack, and that's why the seconds hand on these watches are not all synced, because two of them don't hack, so I can't sync all of them. This one's not even able to be swim uh, capable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend taking this in the pool with that rating. Uh, it's not stainless steel. People have kind of ground this down and found it's some sort of bronze or brass alloy. Uh, with, with chrome plating, so it is actually porous in all categories, but you know, it is actually the cheapest. So if you want a you know, very, very low price budget look in an automatic, uh, hard to go past that one in terms of pricing. You know, I think that's really still uh, the cheapest one out there on market. All right, so the next one is the uh, Liege or Liege, something that I reviewed not so long ago. So as I said, uh, wrist shot for you guys first up, okay? So this is the Liege Men's Automatic LG6801. That's the model number of this particular watch. Uh, the uh, MSRP, uh, you know, it's some of these guys do some stupid things, right? 750, it lists on uh, AliExpress when I checked it up, right? Of course, there's a line through it and then you get the actual acquisition price. Uh, in this case, it's usually around $75. Uh, a Chinese made watch and the distinction of these four watches I have to say uh, all four watches have a different movement now that's not easy to find in this price range but uh, you know I'm, I'm pleased to say that all four of them have uh, different movements and this one has a different Chinese movement uh, you know 40.5 diameter thickness is actually the slimmest one this is actually only 12.5 millimeters thin which is really quite pleasing you know when when you wear this on the wrist uh, weight is, you know, fairly pleasant, I would have to say. You know, it's not the heaviest, but it's substantial. 139 grams, slightly lighter than a, a, you know, a full-blooded uh, steel watch with lots of material. So this one is slightly lighter, 139 grams adjusted weight. Water rating with screw-down crown, uh, screw-down case back uh, is 100 meters. So, you know, with the feel of this watch, I have taken it into a pool and it, it's, it's done all right. You know, it hasn't been a problem as I would expect. Okay, movement in here. The movement in here is interesting. So this one, I couldn't tell at first, I had to ask around, is actually a, a DG4813 uh, or a clone of that, Dixman Guangzhou movement. Uh, so it's a high beat movement. So stats down the left of screen there. Uh, I think uh, most places seem to list a jewel count around 22, but that's not confirmed. Uh, okay, so pretty good that this is a, a high beat movement in here. It's the only one of the lot with a high beat movement at 28800. Uh, loom, again, is standard. They don't say it's super luminova. It doesn't glow very well. Um, and, you know, it, it's slightly better than the, the cheapest one, the Tervais, the T-Wise, but it's not fantastic. It's kind of like Invicta level. Uh, glass is sapphire, uh, but I'll put a, a caveat that not all listings say sapphire. Uh, many listings do. This one is sapphire, but I won't be surprised if there are variations on this out on market. Bezel clicks, right, five. So 60 click does have some back play, not as bad as the cheapest one, a little bit of back play. Uh, it is actually a ceramic insert, which is pretty cool uh, that they've, they've put this in. Uh, the end links are solid. And this bracelet, I have to say, is very similar to the Bugatti in that they've managed to push in, uh, you know, screw link adjustment here and this kind of Rolex oyster style clasps. 
but it's a bit sticky, right? That, that hinge there is a bit sticky, uh, but overall, it, it still works. Uh, I have to say that also that comfort extension doesn't work at all. Like if you kind of just see that, it's, it's coming loose already, that spring bar. So I wouldn't uh, go adjusting this. And if you try to open up that comfort extension, the whole thing will come apart, right? The spring bar would just spring out. Uh, so not fantastic there. Uh, so what can I say about this watch overall? Well, um, you know, the, the negatives are, another thing to say is that the, the loom pip for some reason the, on the bezel is not, uh, not loomed. Uh, it's got a 60 click bezel, which is not fantastic. And the alignment is also off. I mentioned this in the full review. Uh, it's got relatively poor class fit, right? It's, you know, it's a bit sticky there and that thing falls apart, as I mentioned. Uh, but in terms of positives, well, it's got the thinnest case. Uh, it's got a hundred meter water resistant rating. It's got the, the premium materials in terms of sapphire and ceramic. Uh, and it's the only one with that high beat movement. Okay, so you know that's that's got some positives there, along with bracelet spec, which is pretty good, right? Solid, you know, pretty solidly done uh, clasps, right? Along with the screw link adjustment, not bad, right? For what they have squeezed in here, very similar, I think, in terms of uh, what the Pagani offers. All right, so next up, the very popular, the extremely popular Pagani design. Okay, so again, wrist shot here for you guys. So this is uh, the PD1639, very popular review. Lots of people have taken a look at this, I think, uh, and for good reason, because they were the first to squeeze in all this spec in a very budget price. So what price is this? Now, sometimes the MSRP is listed at 450. Realistically, you're gonna get this, uh, you know, similar to the Ligue, around $75 is what you can usually get this for. Sometimes a bit cheaper, sometimes a bit more expensive. Uh, Chinese made, apparently Japanese movement, but there's a bit of question mark around that uh, when some people have looked closely. It's case size wise, right, it's a 42 millimeter case with a bezel that's actually closer to 43. So realistically, you gotta consider it wears more like, like 43. Uh, thickness is kind of middling, right? 13 millimeters thick. Uh, overall weight is substantial, right? More substantial than the first two. It's 154 grams adjusted. It is a larger watch. Uh, water resistant rating is 100 meters on this as well. Uh, movement wise, and you would have seen this in many reviews, is none other than a Seiko NH35A or at least a clone, if not the real thing. And some people have claimed that when they look closely, the quality isn't there and it's possibly, possibly a clone. Okay, stats you've seen before down the left of screen there. Uh, and, you know, this kind of performs up to the, the specs in terms of accuracy uh, as well. A loom wise is a blue loom. It's not super luminova. They don't say what it is. It is actually fairly poor, very similar to the Ligue. Uh, and very similar to Invicta kind of level, uh, maybe even slightly less than Invicta, I would say, in experience. Uh, it does come with ceramic uh, insert on that bezel, a fairly nicely done ceramic insert, uh, sapphire crystal at the top. Uh, the bezel, unfortunately, five, 10, right, 15 clicks. So that's a bit unfortunate, probably the poorest choice, actually. You know, people either prefer 120 or 60, 90 is, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not, neither here nor there. So 90 click, somewhat of a poor choice. Not sure why they went with that. And there is some back play, as you can see me turn that uh, back there. Okay, so that's really what this bezel is. Um, in terms of the bracelet, very similar, maybe, you know, not exactly the same, I suppose, but I'm tempted to think it's the same factory as the Liga. So solid ends. Uh, it's got those uh, screw links, if I can show it to you. So screw link adjustment and a very similar, if not exactly the same uh, class. This one has Pagani design. This one doesn't stick as much, but I'll tell you what, this uh, comfort extension is so tight. It, you really have to, you know, almost rip the bracelet apart to take that comfort extension off. And when you put it back, you some people have had to use pliers. So I'm not gonna even try to open that alleged comfort extension there. Okay, so that's uh, the Pagani design. The strengths of this, well, it's, it's a larger and chunkier watch, right? It is actually the 43. It's the largest one of the lot here. Uh, if you want a larger homage, right, uh, upsize, this is the one to get. Uh, 90 click bezel, not sure about the choice. And then the feel, of course, also is relatively poor. 
a bad bracelet feel because uh, you know that 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 comfort extension might as well not be there. I have to say, and then there's there's certain things that fits not exactly there. So you can see that that one that link there is quite stiff. It doesn't just fall down. It's there's a stiffness to it. So you know a bit of QC issues, which Pagani is infamous for. But what does it give you? It does give you a hundred meter water rate rating. It does give you premium materials, sapphire ceramic. A solid end link, screw link adjustment, so much that they fit in. And that is, I think, one of the claim to fame of this model. And I would have to say, uh, if you look at the Cyclops, right, in comparison to others, uh, the best Cyclops of the bunch here, it actually seems to magnify 2.5 times as opposed to more like two times or less. So, you know, kudos to them that they've managed to put a good Cyclops on here. All right, so that's the Pagani design. Let's move on to the last one, which is uh, none other than the Phoebus. So in this case, it's actually a little bit old school. It's not a date model. And in this case, uh, I've gone for the no date, or at least what I swapped in was the no date, PY006A uh, to keep the budget within $200 rather than more for the 9000 series date model PY007. Uh, this is one I've put on this uh, particular review. So MSRP $299, I think, but usually you could have got this for closer to $200. Of course, it is the older model without the octopus on the, you know, on the dial, which many people uh, prefer not having the octopus. So it's no longer uh, you know, in production, but you still can get this, uh, of course, uh, secondhand. Uh, Chinese made, but Japanese movement, real Japanese movement, as far as anybody has claimed. Nobody has claimed that they use a clone. Uh, it is 40.5 in terms of diameter of the bezel here. Uh, thickness is, uh, again, middling, not the thickest, but not the thinnest, 13.8 millimeters. Uh, overall weight, uh, you know, adjusted weight for my wrist is 159 grams. So the heaviest of the lot, the most substantial feeling, and I don't mind this weight. It actually is a good feeling weight for a Submariner style watch. Uh, it, it actually overall no doubt feels the best in hand in terms of fit. Uh, real dive capability, the only one with real dive capability at 300 meters. Uh, it's got uh, movement wise the Miyota. So it is a Miyota 8000 series, not a 9000 series in this model. It's the 82S0, which at least does not have a ghost date position. Okay. Loomwise is actually super luminova and this one actually functions through the night. So, you know, I can say this about this watch, sapphire crystal, but unfortunately aluminum bezel on this model as opposed to the ceramic in the higher grade models. Uh, in terms of the bezel, it is 120 click. All right, so that's 10. So it is 120 click, very, actually in this case, sometimes feels very firm. Uh, but I'll just get it back to the 12 o'clock because uh, my friend Graham uh, kind of has a, you know epileptic fit if I don't do that uh, on the videos. So 12 o'clock back to the 12 o'clock position for Graham here and other friends. Uh, it does have uh, solid end links, a very, very you know, tight bezel, I came to say, no back play whatsoever. So the best feeling bezel of the lot, uh, solid end links, but uh, push pin on the bracelet and you know, kind of pressed metal OEM. It's kind of like an OEM Chinese uh, clasps and bracelet, isn't it? That's really something you've seen so many times before, no dive suit extension. So, you know, what can I say about the Phoebus? It is the most expensive of the lot here, but still in the budget range, right? Of, you know, this Submariner Hulk Omages. Unfortunately, this one, you know, it's a little bit behind the times now. It comes with an aluminum bezel. Uh, the OEM pin bracelet, which is not fantastic. Okay, just a pin bracelet. Uh, but on the positive side, the only one uh, with 300 meter water rating, the only one that you will have full confidence uh, going diving with, or at least I, I would. Uh, possibly the only real Japanese movement because the Pagani might be a clone and no doubt the best loom of the bunch. No doubt about it whatsoever. It's the only one with real super luminova. Okay, so in summary, what can I say about these pieces? Um, I, I think 
you know, they're, 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 it's difficult to pick any one complete standout. The T Vice is definitely the worst of the lot, no question about it. But it's also the cheapest, and the others have kind of pros and cons. Uh, the Liga has, you know, the only one with the high high beat uh, movement, the DG movement. So maybe it's got the best movement. Definitely the only high beat. It's, it does give uh, the ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal, and the thinnest case. Pagani has you know similar premium materials it's got the best cyclops in terms of magnification and it's good if you want a larger version you know upsize hulk homage that's really what this is uh, providing here with the 43 millimeters uh phoebus no doubt has the best look no question about it best overall feel in hand because the fit is the best there's no question here in my mind in terms of the quality of the production the only one with potentially uh, dive capable in you know, a water resistant and possibly the only real Japanese movement of the lot here. Okay guys, so there we go. That's my comments on these watches. Uh, let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go guys, my group comparison of these budget Rolex Mariner homages. Now I know there are other models uh, available out there and uh, probably the foremost uh, uh, of all in this price range is the San Martin. Uh, now I don't have that so these are the ones I have currently for comparison and this is what I've done and hopefully you guys found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I'm going to put the summary table up uh, of uh, all the information I put uh, in this comparison uh, right here. Uh, so pause it if you want to read it uh, in more detail. Guys, if you enjoyed my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.